As a big science lover, a self-proclaimed science nerd, if you will, forensic science has always been fascinating to me. Using scientific clues and processes to examine DNA, solving crimes, and sometimes catch the bad guys. The stuff of magic, really. Well, maybe not magic, because it definitely is based in real-life biology and chemistry. But DNA testing sure seems like something a wizard would come up with, doesn't it? In this video, we'll explore what DNA testing is and learn what really goes into the process that changed forensic science forever. So, we're all pretty much in agreement that DNA testing is scientific magic, right? Well, despite having an air of magic, there are concrete, aka non-magic ways that this testing is done. Forensic investigators can use various biological materials to test for DNA. Appropriate samples include blood, semen, saliva, urine, feces, hair, teeth, bone, to name just a few. To find and collect these kinds of samples, forensic investigators need to collect items that the perpetrator or other people involved in a crime may have touched. This could be masks, hats, weapons, bedding, cigarettes, anything really. But the best kind of evidence? The kind that wasn't supposed to be there. It's hard for a criminal to remove evidence when they forgot something by accident. As DNA technology and analysis advance, the samples we require to develop a DNA profile get smaller and smaller and smaller. If someone even touched an object, they could have left behind DNA. These teeny tiny samples are sometimes called touch, or trace DNA. Once biological samples have been collected, they get sent to a laboratory for analysis and comparison to existing samples. So here's a quick breakdown of how DNA analysis is done. First, DNA is extracted from the cell. Next, scientists determine how much DNA is present in the sample. This is called quantification. The next step is amplification, where multiple copies of DNA are made. The amplified DNA is then separated. Next comes analysis and interpretation, where the DNA is compared to known DNA profiles. And lastly, the DNA is reviewed by analysts to check for accuracy. With all of that, a DNA profile is generated, showing which genetic material is present in the sample. Let's be honest here, they don't teach that kind of stuff at Hogwarts, right? So, up until this point, we've been raving about how great DNA testing is, and it truly is. DNA is an incredibly powerful tool for finding perpetrators in crimes. However, nothing is perfect. Most people assume that when a person's DNA is located at a crime scene, and there is no good reason for it being there, that person must be guilty of the crime. Lying to cover up, right? Well, that's not always the case. A 26-year-old man called Lucas Anderson was arrested and charged with murdering a Monte Sereno millionaire named Ravish Kamra in 2012. Anderson was charged and arrested based on the fact that the police found Anderson's DNA under Cumbra's fingernails. It really seemed like an open and shut case, except it wasn't. Anderson had an airtight alibi. He was unconscious inside a hospital when the murder took place. So how did Anderson's DNA end up miles away in a place he never visited? Under the fingernails of a person he'd never met? Turns out that the same paramedics who brought Anderson to the hospital also attended Cumbra's crime scene. And they managed to transfer his DNA onto the victim. Admittedly, cases like these are rare, but they highlight the importance of considering alternative evidence to support DNA testing, and not using this method as a one-size-fits-all. 
Another significant limitation of DNA fingerprinting is that it can only match a crime scene DNA profile to a perpetrator if the perpetrator's DNA is already on file. After all, you have to have something to compare it to, right? Of course, just because someone's DNA isn't yet in a police database right now doesn't mean it won't be in the future, explaining why investigators keep even unmatched DNA profiles. Okay, so what can the police do if they have a DNA profile from a crime scene but find no match in their database? They could ask for samples from the public, like in the Colin Pitchfork case, or they could explore another option. One of the most recent and controversial advancements in DNA testing is called forensic or genetic genealogy. This is where police use DNA profiles from commercial genealogy companies either to match a suspect directly or to find the suspect's family members. Some commercial companies will assist in developing family trees based on police DNA matches, which often can help push the case forward when there are no other leads. Forensic genealogy has gained notoriety in the very recent past, and it was used in the high-profile case of the Golden State Killer in California. Police had the Golden State Killer's DNA profile, but could not match it with any criminal already in the database. To mitigate this challenge, investigators used an open-source genealogy service called GEDmatch in an attempt to locate similar DNA records from the thousands of people on the website. Luckily for the investigators, a partial match to the Golden State Killer's DNA was found. They had managed to find a relative of the killer. From here, once a match is identified, experts can reverse engineer the suspect's family tree to find a pool of suspects that meet the description of the killer. After identifying relatives of Joseph D'Angelo, the police were able to narrow their search down to a single family instead of millions of random people. Detectives were able to hone in on Joseph through traditional investigative techniques, comparing descriptions from witnesses with people in the family of interest. Finally, D'Angelo, at 72 years of age, was arrested just miles from the location where many of the attacks took place. Forensic genealogy is a very hot topic in investigation right now. It's actually quite controversial because it raises ethical questions about DNA privacy and individual consent. Advocates for privacy question forensic genealogy as they feel it turns family members into genetic informants without their knowledge or consent. It's probably safe to say that most people who submit their DNA to commercial DNA testing services don't think their DNA will be used by law enforcement. Regardless of the potential controversy of this technique, it's hard to argue that it has not made waves in the forensics community. So, we've concluded that DNA is magical extremely useful and can help us solve crimes. Although it has its limitations, this aspect of forensics has changed the world forever, making it easier to find the bad guys. Unless you're a TV bad guy, then you somehow know exactly how to evade the good guys. Is there a secret forensic training the good guys don't know about? Well, learn more about other techniques used in crime scene investigation in this video about how a body is identified in a crime scene. Don't forget to like the video if you want to see more of these on this channel. And subscribe if you don't want to miss the next upload. I will see you next time.